Hello everyone, my name is Dave, Dave Ramora, and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about sharks. Um, we're welcome to our online academy today in this afternoon at our two o'clock time. We're going to be talking about sharks, we'll talk about their size, we can talk about what they eat, we can talk about how they find their food. Actually, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, um, because you can text in as you're watching um, below to 562-286-1838. I would love to hear your questions um, and I would love to be able to tailor this class specifically to you. So what are your questions about sharks? How can we answer those today? Um, extra bonus points for those of you who can ask a question that, uh, that we don't know the answer to. Um, so that would be, that'll be our fun game to play as well today. Um, so sharks. What is a shark? Well, obviously we can see them. They're swimming behind me. This is a live uh, camera. Um, it, you can find this live camera on the Aquarium of the Pacific's website. Go to Exhibits and Shark Lagoon, and you can see this camera 24-7. I think it's even on at night. Um, and you can see these wonderful fishes and, and sharks swimming around in here. Um, and, you know, typically we can just look and say, yeah, of course, that's a shark right there. Uh, there's a shark that just swam by, there's another shark in the background, and here's um, a different kind of, of fish, you know? So we just have this intuitive sense, that's a fish, this is a shark. Well, ooh, mind blown today, fish are sharks. <laughs> sharks are fish, fish are sharks, but not all sharks are fish and fish are sharks and that kind of thing. So what's the difference between those uh, bony fishes and the ones that we see swimming around in here, who typically have skeletons of bone, um, and the sharks that we can see swimming around here. Um, they are two distinct groups of fishes. The first most important thing is sharks are fish. There's a different kind of fish. So we're gonna start by looking at the outside of a shark. There goes a zebra shark swimming by us right now. Um, just looking at the outside of its body, maybe comparing and contrasting typical, um, you know, bony fishes uh, with our friends, the sharks. Now, I keep saying bony fishes. I think a lot of us know, um, or at least some of us do, that sharks have something different inside of their body, something that we can't see just by looking at them from the outside, and that's their skeleton. Shark skeleton is actually made of cartilage. Now, cartilage is all over our bodies. If you make a fist and you can see that little line on your knuckle, that's a little bit of cartilage. If you grab your nose, oh, don't touch your face. Uh, if you grab your ears, uh, you're, you're grabbing cartilage. Um, that's what an entire skeleton of a shark is made out of. Um, so their, their spine, um, their jaw, their skull, all of that is made of cartilage, not of bone like the fishes or like us. Um, so that's one thing. But there are distinct differences that you can see on the outside of their bodies too. So we're going to walk over to our document camera and together we can uh, draw a shark. And let's remember today, we're asking your questions. Uh, we're not asking your questions, we're answering your questions. We might ask your questions too, who knows? Um, and a bunch of them are coming in. So let's go, let's just start with questions today. I think that'd be most fun. Michaela is asking, and Michaela, thank you for, for joining us uh, for, for this program as well. What is the largest shark that we have here at the aquarium? Um, well, we have, we have one big guy at the aquarium, and here he is. That's him. He's called Big Guy. That's his name. It's a sand tiger shark. Gets to be about 10 or, or 12 feet long. I think 10 feet is probably a good size sand tiger shark. And you can find sand tiger sharks in tropical waters and temperate waters. It's just a little bit colder than the tropics uh, all over the world. Um, not off this coast, not here off the Pacific coast, uh, uh, this side of the Pacific coast, but you can find them in like Australia, the, I think the Indian Ocean, and certainly in the Atlantic, up and down the Atlantic coast. Um, so that is the largest shark that we have here at the aquarium. Um, and if we look at the sand tiger shark, it has that typical shark body shape. Um, you know, it's got these kind of eyes out front, the open mouth, um, these gill slits on the front right here, these triangular fins that we can see. <laughs> Why am I reaching? I can just walk um, all over. Um, so uh, we have some more questions. Uh, Melani is asking, are they nice? 
And do we go in there with the sharks? Like, do we actually come and swim with the sharks? Um, so answer to both questions are yes, yeah, so, sort of yes. Um, the sharks are, are just as nice as the rest of the fish that are in this exhibit. Uh, sharks are fish and they just do what fish do. Um, fish are out there living their lives, eating food, growing, and making baby sharks. And that's what, hey, that was fun. Did you see that uh, gray reef zip by us right there? Um, so, so yeah, and we actually have our divers come in this exhibit all the time. You can see how really clean it is right now. That's because divers have come into this exhibit to clean it all up, to scrub off the algae. Um, now, do I go in there personally? Um, I haven't got a chance to dive in uh, Shark Lagoon, but I have dove in some of our other exhibits, like our big tropical exhibit with the sharks that we have there, uh, and it's really fun. I've also had a chance to dive in the ocean and see sharks in real life, and that's one of those amazing things that you can have. Now, Oliver was asking, do sharks bleed? So that's awesome. We were talking about the cartilage skeleton inside of a shark, um, and what else is inside of there? Um, well, blood. They have muscles just like we do, and they have blood inside of their veins and arteries just like we do too. So Oliver, yeah, sharks totally have blood. They can bleed, um, and the, you know, their blood is going to be very similar to our blood. It'll be different, but it'll be similar. Daphne's asking, uh, how many types of sharks are at your aquarium? Uh, now, we, we kind of went back of the napkin, we thought about all of our exhibits, how many we have, and I think we came up with about 12 or 13 different kinds of sharks that we have in pretty much every one of our galleries uh, throughout the aquarium. Because sharks live all over, from the deepest parts of the world ocean, um, to the warmest parts of the tropics, uh, to the coldest parts of the Arctic, uh, you can find different kinds of shark species. Um, although uh, you know, compared to the, the rest of the fish that you see swimming around here, there actually aren't that many different kinds of sharks in the world. Um, only about, uh, you know, 400 or so plus sharks in the world. Um, so compared to these bony fishes that you see here, where there's maybe over 30,000 different kinds, uh, there are fewer types of sharks. We have another question um, about why do zebra sharks have spots uh, instead of stripes, right? It's a zebra shark. Um, you can see one of our juvenile zebra sharks right here. Um, and you can notice it's full of spots, but if you look really closely, you'll see what looks like some stripes on it as well. When zebra sharks hatch out of their eggs, they're actually white with black stripes or black with white stripes. They look like zebras. And as they grow up, those stripes turn into spots. In Australia, they actually call them leopard sharks. Um, Locally here in Southern California, we have another shark called a leopard shark. So at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we decided to uh, use the two common names. Um, the leopard shark we have here in Southern California, we kept as leopard shark, and we used the alternative common name uh, for these guys as zebra shark instead of leopard shark. Another question, uh, how can or do sharks grow? Um, it's an awesome question exactly the same way that we do. Um, when they eat food, they turn that food into their body. Um, so they eat meat, their body's made of meat, so they turn that meat into meat. Um, there's little bits of sugars that help to power their body and their energy inside of the tissues of fishes and squids and the other things that sharks like to eat. Um, so if you think about the way that people grow or other animals grow, sharks do the same things. Gage is asking, can mako sharks eat big fish? Yeah, absolutely. That's what mako sharks love to eat. You know, we were gonna draw a shark a second ago, but why don't we go over to the document cam and let's look at some mako shark teeth. So Gage is asking um, about mako sharks and what they eat. And what I'll do here is I'll put some teeth on our document cam here, and you can see these long, thin, pointed teeth, especially right there, for our mako shark. Let me bring out another shark here. We can, s oh, here's a good one. Um, we'll put this guy down here and I'll zoom out. So this is a mako shark jaw. Uh, it's a fabricated mako shark jaw, not a, not a real one. Um, 
but this is exactly what it would look like. And we can see these long, thin, pointy teeth. Now sharks, they like to eat uh, fish. Predominantly, that's what they eat. And they use these long, thin, pointy teeth uh, to eat that slippery, slimy fish. The bigger shark you are, the bigger fish that you might be able to eat. Now Francis is asking, um, why do sharks have so many fins? Um, that's an awesome question. Maybe we will go back to drawing our shark. Let's, let's give it a shot. We're going to take a look at the general body shape of a shark, right? And you can draw along with me at home if you want. Now, the first thing you might want to do is to draw kind of like a football, but without the ends. Um, so you can just draw a shape like this, but let's leave one end blank and then we'll leave this side blank. And maybe make that top line overlap the bottom one just a little bit, because this is where the mouth is going to be. Now, this general shape right here, that's sort of like a football, we call fusiform. Now, sharks or any other animal that swims about in the ocean um, or flies through the sky, its body is going to have this general shape, which is sort of like a football. We call it fusiform. So now let's get back to our shark. Now, Francis asked about the fins. So the first fin that we're going to add here is the tail fin of our shark. Now, sharks have this really kind of interesting tail. Usually the top part is a bit longer than the bottom part. We call that the tail fin or the caudal fin. Now on the top of the shark, we'll have another fin. Usually it's kind of like a triangle, sticks out of the top. Um, that's a dorsal fin. Now sharks have sometimes just one dorsal fin, but oftentimes they'll have two. Um, they can have these fins on the sides, right? Every shark is gonna have them sticking out to the sides of their body just like that. Um, that we'll call their pectoral fins. And then every shark will have another set of fins here on the back we call pelvic fins. Every now and then a shark will have one more kind of fin um, and that's an anal fin. Um, so that's our shark's body and all of its fin, these big, fleshy triangles all throughout their body. Now, if we come up to the face, we need to add the last little bits. Now, here's what I like to do here. Start with the lower jaw and make a little triangle and then finish it up towards the nose. You can see it kind of looks like he's got his mouth open. And then you can add little triangle teeth to finish off our shark. Wait, it's not finished yet. It's got a kind of a small face. Um, you got to add an eyeball because sharks have excellent eyesight. You got to add some nostrils because they have an excellent sense of smell. And then right up here, one, two, three, four, five gill slits. And that's kind of completes our shark. I'm kind of happy with how my shark turned out. If you drew your shark, you can share it with Miss Alicia uh, through text. And I'd love to see your pictures as well. Okay, so why do they have all of those fins? Well, sharks use these fins to fly through the water. Um, the pectoral fins, these fins here, they're like the wings of an airplane. And as the caudal fin, this guy back here, pushes the shark forward, which how do I do forward? That way, <laughs> that way. <laughs> I can't do it. Um, it moves forward and these uh, pectoral fins, they pick up the shark off the bottom, they fly through the water. Now they fly straight through the water. And I say fly through the water, they do fly just like an airplane does through the water. Um, and their dorsal fins, these fins sticking out of the top, they help to provide some stability. They keep them from spinning around or flopping over. Um, and then these uh, anal fins and the pelvic fins will, will kind of do the same thing, keeping them from spinning around and also allowing them to steer and get up off the water. So that's a shark's body and what all of their fins do. Let's get to some more of your questions. Okay, we have Maya. What is the smallest shark at the AOP? Well, the smallest shark is gonna be one of our baby sharks. When they first come out of the egg, our uh, bamboo sharks, they'll be about this big. Um, and they will be just cute as a button. Um, and when they grow up, about three feet long uh, and really skinny three feet. So probably our bamboo sharks are the smallest sharks that we have here at the aquarium. Um, Emma is asking, 
uh, what do they eat. Now, sharks will eat a variety of different things. If we have to just be typical about all the sharks in the ocean, we'll say sharks eat fish. Um, but if we want to get specific, there are some sharks, like our bamboo sharks here, which will eat some small fish, but also maybe some worms, some clams and snails that they would find at the bottom of the ocean. So we might see a variety of different things. Daphne's asking, will big sharks eat little sharks? And yeah, remember sharks eat fish. Sharks are fish. So that means sharks, big sharks, will absolutely eat smaller sharks. Genevieve is asking, and, and maybe Maya, uh, how do you keep sharks from eating the other fish? And that's an awesome question. Um, in our exhibits at Shark Lagoon, uh, you'll see a lot of other fishes swimming around with them. Um, and these sharks here aren't preying upon all of these fishes. Why not? Well, it's because we feed these sharks really well. They're always full. Um, they don't have to use or exert energy to try to catch any of their food. They're basically pretty lazy. Um, and they don't want to go chasing after something to try to catch it and eat it if they have a full belly and they're well fed. That's how uh, we handle the sharks here, living and mingling with the rest of these fishes. Oh, there's another question. Do we have hammerhead sharks here at the aquarium? We do. We actually have a special kind of hammerhead shark called a bonnethead shark. Now our bonnethead sharks, they live in our tropical reef exhibit, our big tropical gallery. Uh, I think Stacy's going to try to pull up uh, the video feed from uh, our exhibit camera. And if we get lucky enough, we'll see one of them swim by. There, right there. Oh my goodness, we did get lucky enough. Usually when you're talking about them, they'll be nowhere to be found. <laughs> but yeah, we have these little guys, bonnethead sharks, that get to be about four feet long. Um, let's see, more questions. What is the most popular color of sharks? Yeah, sharks, I don't think we typically think of very colorful animals when we think of sharks. I think probably the predominant color for a shark would be a gray or sort of like a steel blue gray. Um, that seems to be the most common color for sharks, but they can be a really like open ocean, deep blue color. Um, and they can also have black spots and stripes like the zebra shark. Um, so that's kind of the color palette that we see in, in, in different sharks, sometimes a little bit brown as well. Um, let's see, our Ariel and Ryan um, want to know, why is a shark skin so rough? Um, and a second question, are there sharks with no teeth? So first, why, are, uh, why, why is a shark skin so rough? Well, we're seeing the skin of a swell shark right here. And if you look really closely, you'll notice all of these little spots on here. Each one of these is a shark scale. Um, and we call a shark scale a dermal denticle. Let's break down that word a little bit. Dermal, um, derm means skin. Um, so skin, dermal, and denticle. Have you ever been to the dentist? The dentist have your teeth, right? Uh, they don't have your teeth. They don't have your teeth. They help you clean <laughs> your teeth. Um, and uh, so a shark skin is rough because it's covered in teeth. A shark scales are actually made of a special kind of tooth actually growing out of the skin. It's made of enamel and dentine. It truly is in structure and in materials the same as the teeth in their mouth. So that roughness on the side of the, on the back of a shark, that's a skin tooth. So Maya's asking, or, or I forget who was asking, are there sharks with no teeth? I guess the answer is no, every shark has teeth because they all have teeth on their skin, but they pretty much all have teeth in their mouth as well. Now there is one shark that while it has teeth in its mouth, it doesn't really use those teeth to eat. And that's my friend here, the whale shark. No, it's not really my friend. Um, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could be my friend. Uh, it's Alicia's friend. Um, and this is a, a whale shark. Now, I don't know if we can get this under the document cam. Let's see. If we can get that under the document cam. We might be able to see if you look really carefully right here. You can see these things right here. These are rows and rows of teeth that a whale shark has. But a whale shark doesn't use those teeth to chew its food. 
Whale sharks instead are plankton eaters. We can see one right here behind me. And, and by the way, this thing on top of it, this is uh, a sucker fish or a mora fish that actually is hitching a ride on the back of this guy. We can see another one down here. So this whale shark, the largest fish in the ocean, largest shark, largest fish, they can grow up to be 65 feet long, more commonly to about 40 feet. Um, but they don't eat big things at all. They actually eat teeny tiny little things. They like to eat plankton. Now, how does this big old thing eat these tiny little things that if you looked under a microscope, look really wacky and weird, and copepods and tintinids and other things like that. Um, how do they go about eating them? And if they don't use their teeth, what do they use? So whale sharks, they don't use their teeth, but they filter out the water actually using their gills. So along inside of their gills, and here was a basking shark, we can see with its mouth open, also a filter feeder, um, using its gills as it swims through this, the water with its mouth open to catch plankton. So if I were a whale shark and I were catching food, I would swim like this through the water with my mouth open, and I would catch my food that way, just swimming with my mouth open. Wouldn't that be awesome? What if the, you could do that? Just walk around with your mouth open. You probably could catch a few flies, but probably not enough to feed yourself in such a massive animal. But there's a lot of plankton out there in the ocean, and that's how these plankton eaters can get to be so big. Second biggest fish in the ocean is this basking shark. Okay, uh, Maya wants to know, how long do sharks live? And by the way, I am loving this. Uh, we had a whole lot planned for today. I am so much happier just asking your, answering your questions. Not asking your questions, answering your questions. Uh, what is the longest lived shark? Um, Greenland sharks, um, they've been found to be over 200 years old. Um, some people think they might even get to be twice as old as that. We don't really know. The age of animals in the ocean is really difficult to tell, but we do know that some, <laughs> some of these, <laughs> what was that? Um, we have some of these sharks that um, live incredibly long, especially the ones that live in deep water and in cold waters. So over 200 years is pretty incredible. Okay, Andrea wants to know, when do we feed the sharks? Um, well, on a, on a typical day when the aquarium is open, um, they get fed uh, once a day. They don't have to eat a whole lot of food. You know, just a couple percent of their body weight in food a day um, is enough to keep them really satisfied. Um, so just once a day, and it's really not that much food. I think it's like two pounds of food a day or something like that for even some of our several hundred pound sharks. Um, let's see, Aubrey is asking, and I think uh, Andrea asked the first question. Aubrey is asking, do we have plans to have a great white shark at the Aquarium of the Pacific? You know, uh, we don't. Uh, here's a great white shark that we can see here. These guys can get to be up to 20 feet long. Um, it's a really incredible animal. We can find them right here off the coast of California and actually baby great white sharks. This is a place where they come to make babies. And this summer, I can guarantee you right off our coast, tons of baby great white sharks swimming just outside the surf zone. Uh, why are they here? They're here to eat small fishes, stingrays, things like that in the relatively warm water that we have here in Southern California. It's an amazing chance and experience to have to get a chance to see a great white shark that are recovering because of some really great conservation efforts that we have here in California. Will we ever have one on exhibit though? So the state of California and I think the federal government is deciding on whether or not to declare the great white shark as an endangered species. In California, if it's um, in petition, if it's being decided upon as to whether or not this will actually be declared an endangered species, the state of California decides, well, we're going to treat it like it is an endangered species, which means no catching, no research, um, no keeping them in aquariums or anything like that. We have to kind of stay totally hands off uh, until their, their conservation status is, is shown. So we won't be having a great white shark. Monterey Bay Aquarium for a period of time did have some great white shark babies that they would catch here in Southern California, uh, raise in net pens off the coast for a little bit, have in their exhibits, um, and then bring them back and release after they've grown up for a little while. And that effort had, has helped us to learn a tremendous amount about the growth rates and the, and the feeding 
of baby sharks and how fast they can grow. It turns out they grow really fast. Um, that was one of the things that Monterey Bay Aquarium discovered in that process. We learned a lot. <clears throat> okay, um, uh, Melani is asking, oh, can sharks swim backwards? Um, no, they can't. Um, kind of for the same reason that an airplane doesn't typically want to fly backwards. Um, they just don't really have the mechanisms that they can use to go both forward and backwards. Typically sharks swim by kicking that tail fin backwards and forwards. It only helps them to go straight ahead. If we look at these other fishes, these bony fishes, they have the tail to swim from side to side, but they don't have those wings that have to stay out there like that on a shark. So they can do their little flappy flappies on the side. Their pectoral fins can go like this to go backwards or forwards. Uh, so that's why bony fishes can swim backwards and forwards, but sharks can't. Uh, Raiden, your question's been waiting for a while. Sorry, Raiden, I'm getting to it now. Um, are sharks, are there sharks that uh, are not kept together, right? Do we have to keep some apart? Absolutely. Remember before we talked about how some bigger sharks will prey upon smaller sharks, uh, and we want to make sure that we keep them separate uh, for that reason. <laughs> we also get some sharks that get super curious and just uh, annoying. Uh, we had a, a shark that just loved to nibble on the tails of its tank mates. Um, it was just a quirky behavior that that shark had. We had to make sure that it was separated from other animals so it wouldn't misbehave. Um, so yeah, occasionally, and, and sometimes that's just an individual behavior trait that a shark has. Um, oh, someone's asking, what is the most sensitive part of a shark? So that's a difficult question to answer. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Now, is it the most sensitive, like uh, what part of a shark, if you touched it, would it hurt the most? Um, I'm guessing that would be the eyeball. No one likes to be poked in their eyeball, right? Um, and that's just not true of a shark, but of pretty much everything, right? If you have an eyeball, you don't want yourself having it poked at. Um, what is a shark's best sense? And that's also a really great question. All of their senses are amazing for different reasons. Sharks have incredibly great eyesight. They can even see in night and also in color. They have a really great and discriminating sense of taste. Uh, they will only eat things that they really want to eat. You try to feed them something that they don't like to eat, they spit it out. They have the ability to sense movement with their lateral line that runs up and down their body. So if there's a splash in the water or a boat moving through, they can feel that movement of the, of the water with their lateral line. They also have ears, just like we do. Not exactly like we do, but they can hear sounds. Um, so an animal like a fish that might be struggling in the water and splashing about, they can actually hear that noise and it's really attractive to a shark as well. They also have a great sense of smell. Now there's a lot uh, being told about a shark, how wonderful their sense of smell is. It's the best sense that there are. But really, truly, it's probably not true. Most fishes have a pretty good sense of smell. Um, if you notice on those documentaries, whenever they're baiting sharks and trying to drag sharks up to the boat with, with water and chum and, and all that kind of stuff, what do you see all around the bait other than sharks? Lots of other little fishes, right? Coming up to, to feed on that food source. So they have a great sense of smell, uh, but it may not be that much better than other fishes. Um, I think I did all the senses there. Um, sense of touch as well. Uh, Logan and Lucas want to know, how many teeth does a shark have? Now, at any one time, I don't really know the answer to that. A lot. Depends on the shark. Um, but what's really interesting about a shark is they're constantly growing and losing teeth throughout their life. Uh, so as a tooth falls out, uh, a new one will replace it. Um, and if we think about the shark teeth that we showed earlier, there's that kind of conveyor belt of shark teeth coming up and down. A shark can lose and regrow up to 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. It was a study done on a lemon shark. They kept a lemon shark in a... In a enclosed body of water for a few months um, and then they let it go, picked up all the teeth that were on the bottom and then took that period of time and stretched it out over the lifetime of the shark and said it might lose and regrow 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. Uh, Francis wants to know what do shark mouths look like? All right, let's take a look at some shark mouths. Um, here is, I'll bring them to my document cam. Give me a second. I'll bring some of the smaller ones up. Okay, let me get my picture of a shark out. So we have a few different kinds of 
shark teeth here. And I'll see if I can adjust the lighting here a little bit. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so these are three smaller sharks. This is a zebra shark's jaw. We can notice really, really cool little tiny teeth on them. Just full of these little teeth for catching and eating crustaceans and small fishes that are super slippery. We can see this guy right here, he's got some broken teeth in there, but this one's called a cookie cutter shark. Now the way that a cookie cutter shark eats, let me step in front of the camera, is it actually preys upon, it's a shark that's about this big, but it preys upon uh, whales and tunas and swordfishes that are much bigger. Swims up to their side, sucks onto the side and spins in a circle and cuts off a chunk of food. Um, and then we have the last jaw here and we're running out of time. Um, this is from a horn shark. And we have little pointy teeth for eating slippery fish and shrimp. And we have some flat teeth in the back for crushing up the shells of animals. All right. We're gonna answer the last couple questions that we have here and we're gonna sign off. Uh, we have Emma, what is the most popular shark? Well, that's up to you. Uh, for me, the most popular shark, that's the great white shark. Uh, it was one of my favorites growing up. It's one that I thought I would wanna research when I got to be a marine biologist. And while I didn't do that, it still remains one of my favorites. And I love the fact that you get a chance to see them here in Southern California. We saw one here in Long Beach just a few years ago and it was one of the most exciting moments of my life to get a chance to see them. So this, this is the most popular shark because it's my favorite shark. Um, Emmy wants to know how fast can sharks swim? That's an awesome question. Um, you know, sharks can swim anywhere between like 60 miles an hour. For some, uh, we have blue sharks at that, mako sharks at like 45 miles an hour. So if we think about mako sharks, they like to eat tunas and billfish and mackerels and things that swim really fast. So if you're gonna do that, you need to swim fast too. Uh, if we think about, you know, 45 miles an hour, that doesn't sound that fast, but that's pretty much faster than every boat uh, that's out on the water that you've ever been on, um, aside maybe a few. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me for all of the great questions that you've asked. Um, this has been my favorite program to teach and thank you for taking me on this journey because this was your journey that you brought me along with. I had so much fun. I hope you had fun too. I hope you join us again uh, tomorrow and in the future in our online Aquarium Academy. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your day.